Hello friends, today I want to show laparoscopic treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease. So we talk about 42 years old gentleman, complains persistent heartburn, chest pain, medical history, our two years of PPI intact, with the abolition of the later, a laughing first return of the symptoms. Sliding hiatal hernias can have three stages of development. The first stage of sliding hernias develop occurs when the abdominal esophagus migrates through the esophagus orifice, while the gastroesophageal junction remains at the bottom. In this case, the esophageal gastric angle expands and the valve mechanism is lost. Stage 1 hernias cannot be detected by endoscopy or barium examination or CT scan. This may explain cases of GERD without hiatus hernia. During endoscopy, we see incomplete closure of the sphincter and signs of esophagitis. The endoscope tube is poorly covered by the lower sphincter. Also, we see polyps in the stomach as the consequence of the side effects of the long-term PPI therapy. We remove these polyps before the surgery. I use five ports to perform laparoscopic urography and fund application, 10 mm optical ports, 5 mm port for hepatic retractor, and three working ports, one of which is 10 mm. I use Natanson retractor for liver retraction. Using this retractor allows you to work with only one assistant. Next, we set up the rest of the working ports. We begin dissection the pars flaccida in the vascular area. I try to preserve the hepatic branch of nervus flagus. Some authors, in particular Bernard Aleman, believe that the preservation of this branch gives a lower percentage of uh, gastrostasis after fundoplication. Next, I selected the right cruise of diaphragm and with the blunt dissection I go between the cruise and the esophagus. Here we see the posterior vagus nerve and aorta. Then clockwise I dissect along the anterior superior semicircle.
Next, I perform the division of the phrenoesophageal ligament. Moving from the anterior semicircle to the left cruise, we can identify the anterior vagus. Next, I perform a retroesophageal dissection closely monitoring the posterior vagus nerve. My task is to go between the esophagus and the left cruise of the diaphragm. Remember, what is below is the aorta. I constantly monitor the position of the posterior vagus nerve, which is on my grasper. Next, I perform the transaction of only a small part of the short gastric vessels, only in the area of the fundus of the stomach. Many authors decided that excessive wide mobilization of the stomach further leads to worse functional results. Next, we dissect the remnants of the phrenoesophageal and phrenofundal ligaments, selecting the outer part of the left cruise completely.
dissection of the left cruz allows for the safe isolation of the anterior trunk of the vagus. After isolating all the structures, we take the esophagus on the holder and carry out its retraction. This allows us to mobilize the esophagus in order to enlarge its abdominal region. It should be said that uh, these patients did not require extensive dissection. Even a small dissection was sufficient to enlarge the abdominal esophagus. Next, we perform a shoe shine maneuver to determine the possibility of creating a short floppy fund application. We decided to refine the dissection in the area of the fundus of the stomach using the hook. With the help of ultrasound, we finish the dissection of the esophagodiaphragmatic membrane, but under the control of the position of the posterior vagus nerve and aorta. We inject bougie into the esophagus and stomach. 
Next, we perform a posterior crura rafe using Etibong 2 zero suture. Uh, you need to be very careful not to damage the aorta when you work uh, near the left cruise and very careful not to damage the vena cava in failure when you work near the right cruise. In this case, the overlay one suture is enough. Next, we perform a Nissen resative on deplication. I most often give preference to this particular type of fund deplication. I have never met dysphagia and relapses of GERD after performing this technique, and we have more than uh, 70 cases in my area. We create a short and floppy fund application. With the last suture, I sort of stabilize, stabilize the construction.
Hand application completed. It is uh, short and soft. Two months later, a control endoscopy was performed. The esophageal valve closed completely. There are no symptoms of esophagitis. The patient has not been taking EPP for more than three weeks. No relapse of GERD. We see the created fund application. It is a soft and short. Patient discharge from free post-operative day. No complications. Thanks for watching.